Well, hello everyone and welcome to At Home with the London Mozart Players. I was scheduled to do a couple of performances with the London Mozart Players at the end of April at the Queen Elizabeth Hall uh, in Southbank Centre and Fairfield Halls in Croydon. I suspect that those dates may well be postponed. And so the orchestra are uh, reaching out to all the people who follow them and trying to offer you some entertainment during this time when we're all stuck at home. And so as I was going to be their next soloist, they asked me if I would give a little concert for you at home this evening. And we have a little, um, you could call it a studio or more realistically a garden room or shed in our back garden. So I'm stuck out here this evening playing for you. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Rodrigo's Concerto de Aranwez, as that's the piece I was going to be playing with the orchestra. But I'm also going to play some music for you, and I'll start with music before I talk at length about uh, the Rodrigo Concerto. And I'd like to begin with two beautiful pieces by John Dowland, the late 16th, early 17th century Renaissance composer. And one of his most famous songs was called Flow My Tears, and he was particularly renowned for his songs of a melancholy nature. And this piece, the Lacrime Pavane, is an instrumental version of Flow My Tears, and I'll follow that with a piece of purely instrumental origin, his Fantasia Number no. 7 for the lute. So Lacrime Pavane and Fantasia Number no. 7.
For these pieces, I was using a guitar, not my normal guitar. This one is made by uh, an Australian maker from Adelaide called Rob Clark. And it has a slightly lighter and brighter sound than my normal guitar, which is made by another Australian maker called Greg Smallman. And so it's a lovely instrument to use for the Dowland. And it also means I don't have to mess about to the same degree with uh, tuning because the lute works have the third string of the guitar, which is normally tuned to G, uh, down a semitone to F sharp. So it replicates that basically of a Renaissance lute. Whenever you retune a string on the guitar, it will always gravitate to where back to where it had been most recently. So if I had to tune that F sharp back up to G, it would be prone to drop sh flat uh, while I'm playing the next piece. So it's just a practical consideration and a sound consideration to use that instrument instead of the small one, which I have now. The next piece I'm going to play is by Napoleon Cost, a 19th century French composer. There was a real heyday for the guitar around the late 18th, early 19th centuries, particularly in Vienna and Paris. In Vienna, the leading light was Mauro Giuliani, who was a, a contemporary of Beethoven, a wonderful guitarist and composer, but also a cellist. And apparently he took part in the premiere performance of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. And then in Paris, the leading light was Fernando Saw, a Spanish composer who based himself there. And although the popularity of the guitar waned a little bit in comparison through the 19th century, Napoleon Cost nevertheless had a very productive career teaching, performing and composing. The piece I'm going to play is called Le Depart, The Departure. It's actually a dramatic fantasy in two parts, The Departure and The Return. And The Return, there's a, it's a, a triumphal march, a triumphant march, and there's a date, the 29th of December, 1855. And the point of inspiration for this work was the French going off to fight the Crimean War. And it's not programmatic as such, but it, if you like, takes a snapshot of visual images and then paints those in music. So there's some um, very sort of sad reflective moments, some march-like moments, of course, some triumphant moments and, and so on. So it's a very strong and characterful work. So this is Le Depart by Napoleon Cost.
So that was Little Power by Napoleon Cost. Perhaps now I could talk a little bit about Rodrigo's Concerto de, Anwe de Aranjuez, one of the most famous concertos for any instrument ever written. And this piece was written in 1939. And there's lots of sort of stories and myths around the composition of the work. The most famous movement is the slow movement, and the most famous bit of that movement is, of course, the famous tune. And apparently this came to Rodrigo in uh, late 1938, I think, or early 1939. He'd had a meal with the dedicatee of the piece, Regino Sainz de la Mata, a Spanish guitarist. And apparently this tune and also the beginning of the third movement just came to him in a moment of inspiration. And many people will be familiar with it. The cor anglais plays this tune first, while the guitar has these very atmospheric accompaniment chords. I'm not going to sing. And so the guitar runs through those chords while the cor anglais plays the beautiful tune, and then the guitar gets to do it as well. swaps again, the cor anglais takes the tune again while the guitar plays the chords and then the guitar has another go. And so the piece develops from there. It's notable because this has two cadenzas for the guitar. And the first one is particularly um, beautiful and self-contained. And uh, I'll just play it, it's this one. And then there's further development with the orchestra, and then uh, the, the the second big cadenza, which finishes with these very dramatic chords. Um, and then the orchestra has its uh, lovely big tutti section. And the ending of the slow movement is this very beautiful um, passage, which uh, very lightly accompanied in the orchestra, but the guitar has this. some very subtle orchestral colours and the piece finishes with this lovely rising arpeggio. There's a lovely myth around that which is that well this movement was inspired by a miscarriage that Rodrigo's wife Victoria Cami had. Um, 
and that that uh, rising arpeggio, arpeggio was supposed to be the baby's soul ascending to heaven. But if you'd really like to know the truth about the origins of the concerto, then you should look up uh, Graham Wade about in, and in relation to Rodrigo's concerto to Aaron Wes. And he has written a phenomenal biography about Rodrigo, and he talks about this in more detail. But the essence of that myth isn't true, although there was, tragically, a, a miscarriage. Anyway, the piece then is supposed to go straight into the third movement. So you finish that lovely harmonic and let it die away. And then when the mood is right... But, so it... There is that direction on the score. It tells you to do that. It says attacker into the third movement. But in my experience, if you do that, it's such an incredibly poignant and quiet and still moment. So really, everyone in the audience is holding their breath at that moment. And when I have launched straight into the third movement, people exhale or cough or whatever through the introduction. So these days, I and it's totally understandable, so I wait now, and sometimes people are lovely enough to applaud, which I appreciate, and then I launch into the third movement. And there follows three or four minutes of extremely lively, fun and characterful music. And the piece, it's, it's a difficult piece technically for guitarists. And you'd think maybe you'll get a break at some point, but you really don't. The last gesture uh, is this. After a little orchestral tutti, the guitarist goes one. the end of the whole piece. For guitarists, some of the biggest challenges are in the first movement, which requires a low D. The bass string normally is tuned to E, down a tone to D. And more than any other movement, I think this is the one when the point of inspiration for the piece was said to be the beautiful gardens in the Palace of Aranweth. Um, th and the truth of that is a bit variable as well. Once again, I would refer you to Graham Wade, but this is the one that really evokes that sense of a beautiful Spanish garden in summer, and it starts with this highly characterful um, figure. <laughs> Now the next entry for the guitar is completely on its own and you've sat through the very beautiful little tutti section and this is one of the most technically detailed little passages in the piece so if it goes well you're always particularly pleased. <laughs>
that's the end of the first big chunk for the guitar and the rest of the movement really develops that material so it goes around in different keys and um, and uses the fragments in different ways but that is in essence the the bulk of the the melodic material in the first movement so that is an introduction to the concerto de Aranwith, as I said, one of the most famous concertos for any instrument ever composed. And it's a piece that guitarists always aspire to play, and I'm of course delighted to have the chance to play it with the London Mozart players and looking forward to that whenever that may happen. And I will just mention now as well, uh, connected with this at home with the London Mozart players series, and with everything that's going on at the moment, they are um, instigating various fundraising initiatives to help support musicians in this time when everybody's work has disappeared. And so if you're interested in uh, those fundraising efforts, just go to the London Mozart Players website and you will find information about that there. So I have some more music for you now. There is a piece by Federico Moreno Toroba who was uh, one of the composers that Segovia commissioned uh, a lot of work from. And this piece, Madronas, was one that I, when I was a kid, I heard older students playing. And I always really loved it, but I never got around to learning it at the time. And last year I was giving a class at the Purcell School and one of the students there played it and it reminded me of it and I really enjoyed hearing it, so I learnt it at that time. So this is Madronas by Toroba. So that was Madronas by Toroba. 
The next two pieces I'm going to play are by Scarlatti, Domenico Scarlatti. And he wrote apparently 555 single movement sonatas for the keyboard. Inevitably, with 10 fingers on which to, with which to play notes on the keyboard, and on the guitar only six strings, uh, we tend to pluck just with four fingers on our right hand, we can't manage the same potential complexity of music as one can on the keyboard. So these pieces are chosen carefully so that they are uh, sort of sympathetic to the guitar, but then also it's necessary to, to make, necessary to make some changes. And really the art when you're arranging from keyboard for guitar is one of tactful note removal you have to take out enough notes or even add them to make chords uh, more playable so that the pieces sit comfortably on the guitar, but not to remove so many as to change the inherent character of the pieces. But these work very well on guitar, so I'm playing Sonata K380 in E major and then K322 in A major.
two Scarlatti sonatas. Before I play the last couple of pieces on the program, I just very briefly explain if you've been watching and wondered why I sometimes do this before I play. It's because um, obviously we play with our fingernails, but they don't have to be terribly long. If you can see about a millimeter of nail over the end of your flesh, that's about long enough for most people. And so for me, if the flesh next to the nail feels dry, then it just feels like it can stick a little bit on the string. So it's nice if the flesh can slide smoothly across the string. So as slightly disgusting as it sounds, when I do this or that, I'm just rubbing a little bit of grease from my nose or hairline onto the flesh beside my nails and that makes them feel like they can cross the string really smoothly. The whole subject of nails is a massive thing for guitarists. They have to be the right shape and the right length and uh, we have to keep the nail edge perfectly smooth. And for many years now, my buffing tool of choice has been a piece of 2000 grade wet or dry. Of course, the left hand fingernails are short as we press the strings down with our fingertips, but the thumb left hand sits behind the neck of the guitar. So, um, and you only ever contact the, the, the neck of the guitar with your thumb with the pad, never the tip. So if you want to have your thumbnail long, you can. And I do grow it for the express purpose of folding my wet or dry over it so I can push up and buff the underside of the edge of the nail with my uh, 2000 grade wet or dry. And that polishes the edge of the nail that contacts the, contacts the string first. So this is something that guitarists do all the time. Uh, the nail edge has to be perfectly smooth, otherwise you would get a rough sound as your, your nail crosses the smooth strings. I could talk for nail, about nails for hours, but I'll restrain myself on this occasion. So I'd like to play two pieces by Barrios, a wonderful Paraguayan composer. Julia Florida is a lovely barcarolle, a boat song, and then his valse opus 8 number 4 is uh, a a light-hearted South American take on the waltz.
So there we go. That was uh, two pieces by Augustin Mangore Barrios to finish this uh, performance this evening, part of the uh, London Mozart Players at Home series. And I think this is the first of the ones that will go out on Saturday evenings. And obviously, I want to wish everybody the very best at this moment in time and hope that everybody stays well and stays safe. And of course, we've never been more connected. So I hope uh, everyone is feeling, you know, very much in touch with each other and uh, with communications these days. It's wonderful. We can do, we can share music like this. And um, I hope everybody is having the best time possible at the moment while we're all uh, confined to home. And that this evening's performance, uh, I hope, very much hope you've enjoyed it. I would like to finish with one really beautiful reflective piece, the only piece that Francis Poulenc ever wrote for the original work for the guitar is a very beautiful little reflective um, saraband. It's only about two minutes long. And I hope you've enjoyed the whole range of music, but given that it's night time and uh, we're in the, the position we're in, I thought just a piece that uh, we can sit back and reflect to might be a nice way to finish this evening's performance. So, I hope you've enjoyed it, and this is Saraband by Poulenc to finish this evening.